Hi, Michelle Glass here. Welcome back to another episode in our Chapter 28, Lecture 28 series. Our topic starting out in this video is the nurse cell, but we are going to move on from there, talk about other important cells that are in the testes, as well as the um, hormones that are regulating the male reproductive system. So to begin with our nurse cells, we've already talked about these in terms of our sperm production. Taking a look here, we see that the nurse cells are lining those tubes that make up the testes. So your testes are full of the seminiferous tubules and lining those tubules, you have those nurse cells. And actually located inside the nurse cell, you have spermatogonia and primary secondary spermatocytes and spermatids and sperm cells that are getting ready to leave the nurse cell and enter the lumen of the seminiferous tubule. Now remember, if my artwork is not detailed enough for you, you can use the artwork in your textbook, or of course, um, the internet is full of wonderful pictures and diagrams that you can use for your reference. The nurse cells and these developing sperm cells are not the only types of cells in the testes. The other important type of cell is called the interstitial cell. And the interstitial cell is going to be responsible for producing androgens, primarily testosterone. Now, the nurse cell has lots of important jobs, so let's spend a little bit more time here. The nurse cell is actually maintaining what's described as the blood testis barrier. So this is very similar to the blood brain barrier that you talked about in AMP1. Essentially, this um, barrier is, you know, preventing or controlling what has access from the blood supply to these developing sperm cells. And this is going to be important for one, the markers on the sperm cells are different from other cells, and so you don't want to have uh, an immune attack of these developing sperm cells. So the nurse cells are going to protect the sperm from the male attacking his own sperm cells. The nurse cell is also producing the fluid that's going to enter the lumen of the seminiferous tubule. It's going to be high in androgens, so it's not producing the androgens, but it will concentrate them. It, there will be some estrogens here as well, which we typically think about that as a female hormone. Um, it is in higher concentrations in females, but we see that men produce that as well. Potassium ion and also amino acids. Another important job of the nurse cells, obviously, to support the mitosis of the spermatogonia, as well as the meiosis um, to produce your um, sperm cells. It's, it's supporting then that process of spermiogenesis, which is going to be that maturation of spermatids to sperm. And it's also secreting a hormone called inhibin. Inhibin is going to reduce the production of follicle stimulating hormone, which is abbreviated FSH, as well as gonadotropin releasing hormone. We've mentioned both of these briefly in the endocrine system, and we'll talk about both of these more as we uh, progress through this video. Basically, inhibin is responsible for a negative feedback mechanism on the male reproductive um, system. And then we'll also see the secretion of a special hormone here called androgen binding protein. Androgen binding protein, or ABP, has several important jobs. So let's take a look at those. Its main thing is to increase the androgen concentration in that luminal fluid. So that means inside the um, seminiferous tubules. So it's concentrating testosterone there, as well as stimulating spermiogenesis. So remember, spermiogenesis is the maturation of a spermatid to a sperm cell. So we've seen that the nurse cell is doing that, as well as it's, the nurse cell is making the ABP, which also helps both of these things to happen. Taking a look at the hormonal control, we can start with the gonadotropin releasing hormone, which is being produced by the hypothalamus. Gonadotropin releasing hormone, remember, is abbreviated big G, little n, big R, big H. Now, in males, there's pretty much a steady release of gonadotropin releasing hormone. About every 60 to 90 minutes, this is being produced and released. So pretty much the male is being flooded with gonadotropin releasing hormone all the time. Now, this is going to be much different in females where it's released in cycles, and it's also released 
um, you know, in a specific time frame of her life. So it's, you know, with males, this release is starting with puberty and then pretty much extending into older age. The gonadotropin releasing hormone is going to talk to the adenohypophysis. Remember our anterior lobe of our pituitary gland? And it's going to trigger the release of two hormones, FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, and LH, luteinizing hormone. Now we're going to see all these same hormones released in the female and having similar jobs in the female. Um, so we'll just need to pay attention to that pattern. Your follicle stimulating hormone is going to um, target nurse cells. And your luteinizing hormone is going to target those interstitial cells. So we're talking to both of these cells that make up the testis. The interstitial cells are the cells that are releasing androgens, primarily testosterone. And the testosterone is going to have several jobs. It's going to help the nurse cells, so we're going to see that in a few minutes. But then it also is responsible for what's described as secondary sex characteristics. I introduced this idea to you earlier. Uh, secondary sex characteristics include differences in bone growth and muscle development that we see in adult males versus adult females. It's helping to maintain the male reproductive system. Uh, secondary sex characteristics include like the difference in hair growth and adipose distribution and the development of the Adam's apple and all of those features that we can use to recognize uh, an adult male individual from adult female. Testosterone is also important in helping to maintain the libido. So we'll see that connected here as well. And we've said testosterone is helping the nurse cells. Nurse cells are going to be stimulated by follicle stimulating hormone, and this is gonna increase spermatogenesis and spermiogenesis. So remember, spermatogenesis is the formation of new sperm cells, so that's going from that spermatogonia to the primary spermatocyte, secondary spermatocyte, spermatid, and then spermiogenesis is taking us from the spermatid to the actual sperm cell. Nurse cells are going to be releasing that androgen binding protein in the presence of testosterone. Um, and so this is going to help to increase spermiogenesis. So that's the maturation of a spermatid to a sperm cell. And then also we're going to see the release of inhibin, which is acting as a negative feedback mechanism to shut down the FSH and maybe even a little bit of the gonadotropin releasing hormone. So this is to help us kind of visualize that. If you stop the release of the follicle stimulating hormone, then you're basically slowing down the activity of the nurse cells. If you inhibit the gonadotropin releasing hormone, then you're also inhibiting um, the luteinizing hormone as well there. So pay attention to that little tidbit. Um, we will see then that it's a negative feedback system. So the more sperm cells that are being produced, the more inhibin that's being produced, so you kind of slow down the system and then that slows down the production of inhibin and so then everything gets kind of turned back on. Okay, that's it for now.